All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Patty Wolf, and I am the SSP Director at Unicon. I will be your host and facilitator for today's meeting. Today's webinar is going to be about um, best practices for SSP's early alert tool. Our feature speaker is Dr. Phil Nicotera from St. Petersburg College. St. Petersburg College is the very first um, institution to adopt the open source version of SSP. So they have been using the open source version the longest, and they have got lots of good information to share around their early alert process. Before we get started with our feature speaker, I wanted to just share a little bit of information about Unicon and our company before we get started. All right. So Unicon, at its core, is an IT consulting company for the education market. Uh, we were founded in 1993, and we're still owned and managed by our original two founders. We're headquartered right outside of the Phoenix metro area in Gilbert, Arizona. As far as our key capabilities, and I won't go into each one of these areas in a lot of detail, we really focus on three main areas. Our first area being software development. So Unicon does a lot of custom software development for our customers. Um, we are versed in a variety of different software development languages, so we can work with you to build a new application, extend an existing application, whatever your needs might be there. We also focus on technology solution delivery. So we work with many customers in a hosted or managed service capacity to maintain their environment to make sure they're up and running for their users. We also work in IT services and support. So this area is specifically the area um, where SSP comes to play. Unicon is very active in the open source community and we support many open source products. So we work with you from the beginning to end uh, with respect to adoption. So installation, implementation, and then work through ongoing support and maintenance if needed. All right, so around domain expertise, uh, we talked a little bit about open source technologies. We've got a lot of domain expertise in a variety of different areas, and those are highlighted here. So identity and access management, mobile, student recruitment success and retention, portals, learning technology, and media. So student recruitment success and retention, that's specifically the area that SSP falls into. Um, one of the areas that we are seeing expand and grow with respect to SSP is around learning analytics and integrating learning analytics into SSP as part of an institution's overall process to identify those students who are considered at risk and then SSP being utilized as a tool to manage those interventions and tracking uh, the activity specifically for those students. Right. So that was just a little bit about Unicon. I will turn it over to our fe feature speaker, which is Dr. Nicotera. Some of you might know Dr. Nicotera, but just a quick bio for him. Um, Dr. Nicotera is the provost of the Caruth Health Education Center at St. Petersburg College in Pinellas Park, Florida. He oversees eight allied health programs. Dr. Nicotera earned a bachelor degree in psychology from Damon College in Amherst, New York. He has a master of education degree in student personnel administration from the State University College at Buffalo, New York. And he has a doctor's a degree of medicine and surgery from the University of Bologna in Italy. He started working at St. Petersburg College back in 1995 as an adjunct professor of anatomy and physiology and he continues to this day as a professor of anatomy and physiology as well as microbiology. So during our webinar session today, we will be taking two breaks in the presentation to answer questions. I will be facilitating the questions through the Adobe Connect chat window. So as we go through the course of the presentation, if there are questions that come up, please type your question there and we will be uh, reading those aloud to the group and then having Dr. Nicotera answer those questions. 
All right. So, Dr. Nicotero, I will be turning it over to you. Welcome, everybody, and, and thank you for uh, taking the time out to hear our presentation and our story here. Um, what I've done today is sort of divided up our presentation into three parts. I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our college. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about the systems that we needed to integrate in order to um, work with the SSP program. And then finally, which will be the longest piece of the presentation, will be our experiences of going through the implementation and in our experiences after we implemented and where we and where we are today and where we will be heading in the future. So we are a publicly funded college in um, Florida. And uh, so we're part of the state college system. And there you can see our, our enrollment figures. And so we have a fairly large enrollment uh, population, both part-time and full-time. And um, not all of our students, just as we see that large number, not all of our students that, that uh, that are on here in our total credit enrollment are really on our early alert system. But we'll get into what populations we, we have on our early alert system later on in the, in the presentation. Next slide will show you um, our enrollment figures by race, and you can see we're predominantly white uh, uh, college with, with uh, almost equal numbers of African Americans and Hispanics. And then later on, when I show you some of our success rates, you'll be able to see where we've had some of our greatest in what what populations we've had our greatest success rates. Um, our enrollment by age, uh, interesting. You know, we our our biggest population of students by age is 19 to 21. Um, probably a few years ago, that was a little bit different, being a little bit older. But but we've seen over the past few years that. That has has uh, the, the our students have become a little bit younger th that are coming to us. We are a multi-campus college, and so there you can see um, all of the sites that we have, and um, all of these sites do take part in our early alert system. So th that is one of the uh, biggest challenges of of being able to implement a system like this are having all of these campuses that, that need to be able to uh, be trained and, and work on, this, on, on the system with us. And I think I, so uh, I'm sorry there, I thought I, I missed a slide, but just to give you, a, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put a frame of reference here. In March of 2012, a little bit more than two and a half years ago, um, as a college, we made a decision to really focus on student success um, and, and to put a lot of effort. And so what we, what we did as a college is we devised five different initiatives, early alert being one of them, and, and comprehensively we called these five initiatives the college experience. So early alert was one of them, new student orientation, um, having uh, making sure that every student has a learning plan, um, career and integrated advising and learning support, enhanced learning support were the five initiatives that, that we put in place under the umbrella of, of the college experience. Um, and, and we've been at this for a little bit more than two and a half years, and um, what we're finding is that we're, we're really seeing some, some very positive results, which we'll see towards the end of the uh, presentation here. However, so we came up with the idea in March of 2012, and so this will give you a quick run through of, of where we've been. We um, were the first, so, Kind of historically, uh, SSP, um, when it went open source, it went open source, I think, Patty, if I recall, around in May of uh, 2012. And we were the first college to 
uh, contract with Unicon to implement the SSP program. So we were working with Unicon as as the system was being was being uh, changed over. Uh, so we were we, we were that first implementation, and so you can see that we trained and implemented and, and implemented the. Uh, SSP program at SPC between the period of June and August of 2012. We wanted to uh, change and rebrand uh, the, the name of Student Success Plan so we could have some ownership of it at our college as we went forward. <laughs> Excuse me. So we we branded it and we call it the Student Coaching System. We went live in August um, of that of, of 2012. A year later, we upgraded to uh, 1.2 version, and then in May of 2000, or, I'm sorry, July of 2014, we just upgraded to the 2.2 version. However, we, we did some enhancements, some some college enhancements that we wanted to uh, integrate into the student coaching system. At that point, we use we were using a queuing system in our advising centers where. When a student would come in to see an advisor, they would log into a system, um, and and then and then uh, the advisors would be able to see who was in the lobby, and and they could call them in um, based based on on uh, who was in line, so to speak. So so it was kind of an online queuing system. Well, it was a separate program, and and, and our advisors also kept. Uh, notes about students in in the system, and so the system is called Who's Next. Not sure if anyone out there uses Who's Next, but one of the one of the things that we learned from our advisors is that as we became more reliant on the student coaching system, uh, they had too many uh, different softwares open on their desktop at one time, so they had who's next, they had our student information system open, they had who's next, they had the coaching system. So they, they asked us to see if we could make their lives easier and, and, and place um, all of these or integrate all of these systems so they could only have one system uh, open on, on their desktop. It would make them easier as they were seeing the, the uh, student. So, so we, we integrated that in with the upgrade 2.2. So I, I know one of the things that may be of interest to some of you is, you know, what what are the systems that we integrated with with SSP or the student coaching system? Well, our student information system is PeopleSoft, and so all of the information that we take into the coaching system about the student derives from PeopleSoft. Um, we we uh, the LMS that we use because the early alert originates out of our uh, out of our roster in our LMS, and, and then into uh, the student coaching system, we we are currently in a transition. We had been using Angel, and and we are currently uh, transitioning to Desire to Learn. And we have about right now um, about a thousand, a little bit more than a thousand sections on D2L, so we're running a dual system, and we do have um, the interface between um, the student coaching system and D2L uh, going at the same time as we do with, with our ANGEL integration with um, uh, our coaching system. So, I'm sorry, at this point, I'll stop and, and see if anybody has any questions regarding our information systems how how that implementation went or or any any point of interest that you might have at that at this point great phil i see some questions coming in over the chat so okay. just one second and we'll read yeah. those to the group So the question is, do your systems talk in real time or is info based on nightly uploads? It's based on nightly up uploads right now. However, we are really looking at real time. That is a goal for us, um, but, but it, is, it is nightly updates right now. A couple more questions coming in. Yeah.
Are your early alerts auto-generated or are they manually entered by the faculty? Manually entered by the faculty. And, and I can uh, uh, elaborate on that just quickly here uh, for the group. Um, the faculty uh, in either D2L or um, Angel in on their roster in the LMS have a button for an early alert. So they click on the button. That button opens the page in uh, a seamless opening of the page in the student coaching system or SSP. The faculty member actually uh, demographic information about the student uh, auto populates the page. The faculty member selects from a uh, drop down um, what is the issue that they're having with the student? Is it is it a low test scores? Is it an attendance problem, etc.? Um, they also have a, a, an additional drop down menu to to give us information regarding what they think might be a solution. So, a uh, solution might be uh, they need to go to learning support, or 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 uh, or the, maybe the faculty member might might put in uh, might select that they might need to withdraw from the course at this point the the page also allows them it ha there's a text box in there and so they can type in additional information that they want to provide the advisor or coach about that student and about that situation and then at that point they click a send button the faculty member gets an automated email that uh, we have received the alert and that we are working on it and we will get back to the faculty member after we contact the student. Um, they also have the ability to choose the faculty member to choose whether or not they want us to have an, uh, an automatic email sent to the student that the faculty member sent the early alert on them. So, so that's just kind of a quick uh, overview on, on how that works. Great, thank you. Sure. So I don't have any other questions coming okay. in. So if you want to move forward, that would be sure, great. Sure, we're ready. So when we started, we'll, we're going to go through this piece of the presentation. We'll go through our, our implementation um, in, in what we've been doing over the past uh, two and a half years with uh, the student coaching system. So when we first started in August of 2012, we, we really wanted to start out slow. Um, and so we uh, only did alerts on uh, students that are enrolled in developmental education classes. And, and, we, and we stuck with that model for about one year to, to make sure that we were able to really be able to manage the system, look for any of the uh, 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 situations that we needed to do training with our staff and faculty with that that, that came about during that period of time. Uh, so, you know, we thought that a year was a really good uh, litmus test for us to determine where should we go next. So after that year, we, we felt pretty comfortable on moving on and really enlarging um, the population of classes uh, uh, that we were going to use for early alerts. So after year one, we, we uh, set early alerts for all of our gateway classes and in our definition of gateway classes are classes that are that are high enrollment introductory classes and and, and quite honestly classes in which students as, as they are high enrollments and, and they're those classes that they take usually in the first semester or two are classes in which we see students really struggling in and and so that was our our choice in them and, and just we we have about nine gateway classes that we did this in and um just quickly i'll give you just a couple of examples english comp was is one of them um we have a student uh life course that that is one of them uh several of our introductory math courses are part of our gateway courses in the sciences we have a lot of students very high enrollments in anatomy and physiology so so they they were part of our gateway courses um uh, so, so you can tell that those were very introductory classes, and and within those, as you see, as I go on to the next slide here, I'm just going to jump ahead a slide, uh, just to, uh, I'm sorry, to show you that we we have about 
once we added the gateway classes, we had about 900 sections. We averaged about 900 sections of classes uh, that we have early alerts in. And um, we, we average about 155 coaches or advisors, as we call them. Um, and, and I'll explain that. We... As, as many institutions, we don't have 155 advisors, so I, I really don't want to, to, to make you believe that we have that many advisors. But we have individuals who are not advisors who serve as coaches and receive early alerts. And so um, that's why our number is 155 coaches slash advisors. The, the number of faculty teaching those classes averages about 450. And as you can see, we've had a, a, almost 11,000 alerts since we started in 2012. And so, you know, as we go on, um, you know, the first kind, the first semester, you know, we, we, we we didn't have that many alerts as people were just trying to get used to the system. But, but um, as time went on, we saw that um, faculty became more comfortable with sending alerts. And, and so those numbers started to increase tremendously. So when, when, we, just, when we decided that we were going to do early alerts at, at SPC, um, it was very important that we reached out to all of the involved groups at the college. So one of the first steps that we did is we went and we met with all of our academic deans and we proposed, you know, what we wanted to do with early alerts to get their support, which we did. The second thing that we did is we met with our faculty governance organization because we wanted to let we wanted to hear the input and the feedback from the faculty representatives that we were going to implement uh, early alert in their classes and, and we, we wanted to show them what it looked like, what was the value of it and what their par participation would be. And so we've got, we received positive feedback from, from them on it. We extensively trained faculty that we're going to use and we continue to train faculty every time we upgrade um, and and one of the things that we try to do every semester is hold a round table with faculty to hear to get feedback from them uh, you know regarding that semester and alerts they had and and whatever feedback they they want to provide for us I went through these stats for you, um, and, and so I'll move on to, to on to the next slide. It kind of jumped out, but it seemed appropriate at the time to to give you uh, that. Here is our early alert process. So one of the things that we trained faculty is if a faculty can reach out to the student before they send an alert, that's what we encourage faculty to do. So if there's some way that they can resolve uh, the, the, the uh, or help the student, that's, that's what we ask them to do. Um, if, if they feel that they were unable to do that, now in a case of a student that is not attending class, obviously they can't do that, but, but or, or perhaps there may be issues that a student has that is beyond the control or the help of a faculty member, or sometimes the faculty member helps the student but also wants us to become involved in helping manage that, that student, so they'll, that's when they will, will send the alert through the, for, through the LMS. Um, as, as I explained to you, we ask faculty to really try to be as detailed and provide the coaches with as much information about the reason why they're sending the alert. And then our goal is to contact the student within 24 hours after the alert has been reached in, in, to the coach. So the coach gets the, the alert right away e immediately and so they will try to reach out to that student. So we use a number of sources to reach out to the student. You know, we call them, we email them, um, we, we, and then if we are unsuccessful after a number of tries of calling and emailing, then we send the student a postcard to see if we can get them to come in or to contact us. Just as a, as a side note, you know, when we first started doing this, I think one of our biggest mistakes was we probably 
didn't do a good job at marketing what we were doing in terms of early alerts to to the students in the classroom and and so I think as a result of that, we found that students were somewhat apprehensive to answer our phone calls. So we would see that that it would take us uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, tries to actually get a hold of a student, and sometimes we would and, and sometimes we would never get in touch with the student. But but what we've been finding over the past, last two semesters is that students now understand what this is about, and and they are picking up and answering the phone calls or answering their emails uh, in, in a much quicker fashion th than they were two years ago. Um, our, it, when, when our coaches or advisors can, when, when they have some concrete information that they can provide back to the faculty, they they close that loop and let the faculty know, uh, you know, what they've been doing with the student. And so, you know, our goal is when an alert comes in is to try to identify, you know, where where the issue is, provide the student with with the assistance and the advice, and and perhaps the resources uh, to help them. Um, uh, stay in class. So here are some of our results since, and that should uh, uh, since 2011. We we've seen a five percent increase in 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 course success in developmental and gateway classes, an eight percent increase in success among our African American students. 9% increase in success among our Hispanic students, and a 10% increase in retention for both African American males and Hispanic males. And so, so we've seen, we've seen, and these obviously are groups that that we have always had difficulties um, with with keeping that with retention rates with, with these groups of students. So. Some of the lessons that we've learned over the past two or so years is 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 training, and um, and, and so here I put when, how much, and to who, and you know, sometimes you know we we. You know, sometimes we we had to do training because we implemented very quickly. We 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 had to train some somewhat on the fly, so to speak, because as we as we made some tweaks to the the uh, student coaching system, we, we kind of caught us we caught ourselves in the middle, um, and and we needed to go back and, and to do some some uh, enhanced training. So what we originally trained on, we, we needed to to do a little bit more in detail. Um, I think when when I put the how much is it's it's a continual process. Um, we have developed um, training. Uh, Every several months for our coaches, uh, whether it's refresher courses or, 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 and obviously any any new um, features that have been put into the system. But but we we make sure and we monitor and and we uh, uh, we monitor who does the training and when they've done the training to make sure that, that everyone is up to date on that. And I put who because. Um, you know, it's just not advisors and faculty uh, that needed to be trained. It, actually, th there's a lot of department staff who who students will contact uh, who needed to know at, at least some initial information about what an early alert is and what was the purpose of it. So, so you know, it was important to reach out to the entire college community so, so that everyone uh, uh, understands what we were doing and what was the purpose of it. Um, when you have a multi-site campus, it is so important that you develop very, very clear and precise protocols on how to use the system and what to do in 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 different in, in different situations and i will tell you and honestly that's still a work in progress for us because as as we as we continue to use this um, we've developed some protocols but we 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 still have more to go in fact we instituted about a year ago what we call our student coaching system um, 
steering committee that meets every two weeks. We meet uh, both face to face and those that can't make it face to face. We 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 they can join in uh, um, by webinar, and 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 the goal is to talk about uh, what's going on with our with the students and 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 the coaching system you know during that two week of period of time and and to really look at how we can better utilize the system so who are the people that make up that committee are 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 uh, uh, um, a representative of a coach from each of the campuses um, we have three or four faculty members and, and and a couple of administrators that are that are on that that steering committee, and so they really are the individuals that end up developing the protocols and 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 the training uh, manuals for the system. Um, well, I'm going to tell you, I put implementation and upgrade timing um, on here because I think that's something, you know, we. We always want to be able to have enough time that after we upgrade or implement that we've had enough time to test. And so, you know, we we wanted to really get started back in in August of 2012. So we implemented it, and, and not that it was a rough road, but 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 we. It, as with any new software, you know, if we had another two or three weeks, it, it would have been great. Um, and, and I will tell you that the advisors, when, when we created 2.2 uh, uh, this July and we went live in August, well, one of the things that um, the coaches and advisors had asked me was that, not to go live the first day of classes with with the upgrade and um i listened to them and we, so we went live uh at the end of the second week of classes and, and and we had some tweaks that we needed to do in in the system because we had um uh, we had integrated that who's next piece into there which was a a very uh uh difficult process to take in another software in, in, into the student coaching system. And, and because of that, we didn't have the adequate time to really test it out. And, um, I, you know, I, I think that was a lesson that I learned there. And of course, the biggest thing, it goes with training, is is in communicating with with everyone at the college, including the students, on on, on what we're on, on what we're doing. And so with that, if anybody has any questions on, on our experience, I'd be happy to answer those. Sure, Dr. Nicotero, we have some questions that have come in during the course sure. of your presentation. Yeah. So the first question is, do early alerts go to specific individuals or to a central repository? Specific individuals, we we assign our advisors or our coaches uh, based on where the student's home campus is. So so each student that has a potential uh, is it, each student that's a potential early alert student is a, is is assigned a, a coach at the beginning of the term. Great, thank you. And how are your uh, caseloads managed? Oh, that's that's yeah. That's that, that's <laughs> hey, that's a great that, that's a great question because um, I, I'm I will be, I will honestly say th they're managed with difficulty in in the sense that you know early alerts in 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 when you assign uh, uh, early alert students the way that we're assigning it's it's the luck of the draw for the coach. One coach may end up with with 100 alerts, and another one may end up with 10. It, it's 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 the luck of the draw, I, is what I call it. What we can do, and one of the features that we have in 2.2, is if we see that an advisor or coach is getting too many alerts, we we can reassign. Uh, immediately some of those alerts to another advisor that has a lesser load. So it's it's kind of done um, throughout the semester. Um, we don't do that a lot, but 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 that capability is there and that's how we manage that right now.
Great. And another question is, how did you market SCS to your students? Uh, we, we, um, our marketing, and, and, and again, I, as, as I uh, kind of said earlier, I don't think we did the best job at doing the marketing. We, we did put up, we did have our, our, our marketing and public information department um, make some signs and put it on our website, uh, put it on the, on the front page of, of the LMS Angel, you know, at, at intervals. Uh, we asked faculty to put it in their syllabi. All right. Another question is your use of the word success related to course success or completion degree success? In in today's presentation, course success. Course success, right. All right. Um, coaches and faculty, do you use the staff from tutoring departments and labs to assist with your referrals? And yes. if so, do they add to the SSP early alert responses? Yes, they do. Uh, we we use um, anyone that um, is interested in in being a coach. So we do have some. We 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 have some um, learning support staff. We we actually have program chairs or program directors. Uh, we actually have some staff assistants. Um, we have some vice presidents who are coaches. Uh, so so we 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 have a. Uh, a wide variety of coaches, and yes, they they uh, they they act the same way as any other coach would. In fact, um, our next phase is we um, we offer bachelor bachelor degree uh, programs here at SPC, and um, in some of our bachelor degree programs, uh, some of the full time faculty are required. Uh, uh, to advise their students, so so they they have an advising load in that bachelor degree program for students, and so our our next um, uh, our, our next addition of of students to the uh, student coaching system early alert is going to be students that are in baccalaureate programs, and the coaches will become uh, the the faculty that advise these students. And there is a follow on question uh, with respect to using tutoring departments and labs to assist with those referrals. Mm -hmm. Are those resources then assigned as coaches in SSP and what kind of access do they have um, and their role specifically? Uh, they are assigned as coaches and they have the same role as as a coach or advisor does. Great. Does your training focus on technology and coaching skills or just technology and upgrades? It, it focuses on both. We, we, we do separate trainings on the technology or the end user piece. Uh, uh, and then we do uh, uh, a training on what I'll call the soft skills piece of, of how to uh, uh, work with students, how to case manage students, uh, how to coach students. So we, we do both trainings. Since you are a PeopleSoft school, how do you manage the task of assigning students to a caseload, as well as keeping up with dropped students throughout the semester? Um, so that's a question I'm going to try to answer, and I'm not sure I'm the best person here to answer. So we 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 um, uh, we assign students in the advisor table in PeopleSoft. So we will what what we do is we generate we generate a list of of students the the first day of classes or or uh, the Friday before the uh, session begins. Then at the end of that first week, which is drop ad week, we 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 generate another list and and we 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 see who dropped and we pull those students out of our advisor tables in in PeopleSoft. Um, and then if we do an eight week class, we we do the same. We bring that in. Um, if a student withdraws in the middle of the term, 
Um, currently, we're not doing anything with that student. They just remain as a student because our hope is if they withdrew, if they withdrew from that class, they didn't withdraw from all of their classes. If they withdrew from all of their classes, we hope that we're we still want to reach out to them because we want to see if what we can do to to help them return to school. And and really, what we are attempting to do is that once you're assigned a coach or advisor, that that is your coach or advisor for life, even if you change main campuses. Great. And another question, Dr. Nicotera, does the 5% success rate mean that of the students to whom you reached out to, or the 5% succeeded in their classes? No, the 5% that we reached out to. Great. That is all the questions that I have currently in the chat window. We'll give everyone just another moment or two to add questions. While we're waiting, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's next for SSP. So SSP is planning on another release. Uh, our 2.6 release is planned for the early November timeframe. It's going to have some new features and enhancements such as a student watch list, learning analytics integration, um, some SSP dashboard redesign um, that will expose some student performance indicators, bulk emails, and more enhancements as well as bug fixes. We will be talking a little bit more in detail about our SSP 2.6 release in the SSP open source forum that I would like to invite this group to. That is scheduled for November 5th at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and you can register at the Unicon website. The link is provided below. And um, also, again, I just provided my contact information. Again, my name is Patty Wolf, uh, and you can reach out to me via email or phone if you have any additional questions about our services around SSP. And Patty, I, I'm sorry I didn't provide my contact information, but if anyone that, that, is, that is on the line today would like to contact me, um, perhaps if you want to send them my email, um, uh, that, that would be fine, and I'd be, be happy to answer any further questions. Sure. I will add your contact information here, Dr. Nicotera. Great. Great. Well, I don't have any other questions coming in through chat. Thank you, everyone, for spending time with us today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nicotera. Excellent presentation. You're welcome. And Good I luck hope to everyone. everyone. Has a great rest of the day. Great. Thanks.